Hey guys, I've been getting quite a few requests on uh, specifications of my uh, V22 Osprey lookalike sort of vertical takeoff plane. Um, I'm going to start with the dimensions and the weight. Uh, I'll then move on to the mechanics of how it works and how it flies, and then move on to the programming with the electronics. The wingspan of the aircraft is 90 centimeters. And the total width, including the motor nacelles, is 1 metre and 4 centimetres. The length of the aircraft is 1 metre and 2 centimetres. The square box section of the fuselage is 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres. The total height of the aircraft is 35 centimetres. So the motor nacelles and the wing in, uh, add another 20 centimetres on top of the fuselage. The total weight of the aircraft with a battery is around 1,600 grams. Uh, the battery I'm using is a Turnergy 3S uh, 3000 milliamp. Uh, this weighs around uh, 245 grams. And the airframe of the aircraft without the battery weighs about 1,333 grams. So it's about 1.3 kilos. The total uh, width of the wing is 15 centimetres. The size of this flap here that folds down is 9 centimetres by 13 centimetres. The motor nacelles are 20 centimetres long and 5 centimetres wide. The rear elevator is 15 centimetres. Uh, long and 35 centimeters wide and the actual elevator flap is 5 centimeters wide. The vertical stabilizers are 15 centimeters long and 20 centimeters high. The rear, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, ramp at the back starts 60 centimeters from the front. So a little over a third of the length is uh, taken up by that. The way the pitch control or elevator control is uh, controlled in a hover on this aircraft is by rotating the propellers, uh, the motors. Uh, this has a greater effect than just rotating the pods due to it being uh, further away from where the centre of gravity is, roughly. So has more leverage, has a larger moment around the centre of gravity. So for pitch control, they both uh, rotate forwards and backwards, as you see there. For your control, they go opposite ways. And for roll control, uh, the motors are increased or decreased with the throttle um, for roll control. Uh, for the transition, I flick a switch on my transmitter and it rotates uh, the motor nacelle forwards. This is a, a slow forward flight setting at roughly 45 degrees. It's uh, slightly close to the horizontal. Uh, notice also the motors are tilted forward slightly. I found that if they're parallel with the motor nacelle um, it has weird pitching up tendencies when in slow forward flight and then when you flick into fast forward flight it goes all the way down it's not quite horizontal but um, it flies it flies better in this because the the rear flap adds a lot more lift but it looks like it's horizontal when it's flying the total time for the transition is seven seconds from horizontal to vertical so it's roughly three and a half seconds halfway. And that's the way it controls itself. It also has a an elevator at the rear. As you can see there, when I rotate the motors, that also rotates. Um, all of these axes are controlled using a KK2 board, and I'll show you that in a second. For the motors, I'm using twin, no, D2836-8, 1,100 kV motors from Hobby King. Uh, I'm using 30 amp speed controllers. 
They're uh, F30As, I think they're called, from Hobby King. <clears throat> I'm also using uh, BMS 630 Metal Gear servos. They have uh, 13 kilograms of torque, and uh, they seem to do the job. At the moment, I'm running 10 by 4.5 props, uh, slow fly props. They seem to be quite good. In forward flight, though, they're quite um, slow. They don't seem to have sufficient pitch. I have actually tried some, uh, like, electric... I don't know what they're actually called. They're E-fly props, uh, 11 by 5s. They're... They're okay. The problem is with them is where this has greater pitch up, uh, or greater surface area on the outside of the prop, the speed props have it on the inside and all of the air from the inside is just buffeting all on this and all on the wing. Whereas you want the thrust on the outside of the wing on this aircraft. So although they seem to fly right in forward flight, they're not very powerful for hover. So if I lose altitude a bit too fast, they're not very uh, good at recovering. So I'm going to get some 11 by 45 props to uh, test out some slow fly props. The servos I'm using to tilt the motors just here are just uh, 9 gram Metal Gear servos from Hobby King. Uh, they're about $5 each but they do the job. They're relatively strong. So if I open up this flap in the front, see here's where the battery is mounted. Uh, there's a slidable tray, if I undo this velcro, you can slide the battery forwards and backwards and these rubber things stop it from sliding in flight. I find it's better when it's all the way up the front. The, uh, that, that makes the CG just slightly in front of the, uh, the motor, the sails. It doesn't have much of an effect in hover, but um, it's, it makes it fly a lot better in uh, forward flight. If I open the hatch in the rear, you can see the KK2 board or KK2.1 board and an orange 2.4 receiver for Spectrum. On this, I'm running uh, Open Aero VTOL uh, software, and it's amazing. Just going to run you through the program that I've done. Uh, if I run through them very quickly because it's quite hard to understand if you haven't set up this program before. Basically I have output 1 is the left motor, output 2 is the right motor, output 3 is the left servo, the uh, smaller servo at the top, output 4 is the servo uh, for the other motor, output 5 is the left tilt motor, Output 6 is the right tilt motor, and output 7 is the rear elevator. So, it won't make sense to a lot of you. But basically, for the motor control, uh, the aileron, P1 is hover mode and P2 is forward flight mode. Oops. So, I have the aileron uh, decreasing or increasing the throttle on each motor by 40, 40%. Um, and that's the same on this one. Except this one's minus 40, so they both act in opposite ways. If I go down here, you can see the rudder volume, so that's P2 is forward flight. So I use differential thrust for rudder control during forward flight. Um, I have the roll gyro during hover turned on and the yaw gyro during forward flight turned on. For output 3, which is the left servo for the motor, I have 100% travel on elevator during hover and 100% on the rudder uh, travel during hover. I also have the pitch gyro on during hover and the yaw gyro during hover. The output 4 is pretty much the same. If 
about but five. Um, the offset is basically the trim. Uh, I'm not sure if this is what the way it's meant to be set up, but that's the way I've got it set up. So uh, the 80 is during the hover. That's the travel of the tilt servo. So that makes the servo vertical. Then P2 is forward flight. So that's minus 100, so that's all the way down. Um, during forward flight, they act as aileron servos. So I've got them doing 50% travel volume. I also have the roll gyro on during forward flight. Uh, output 6 is pretty much the same. Output 7 is very simple. It's literally just the rear elevator. So I've just set 100% volume for both of them. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you want to follow more projects uh, of mine, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And goodbye.